Good evening, everybody. This is Darius Sesemi, uh, publisher of GV Wire, President Granville Holmes. Uh, welcome to another episode of Unfiltered, along with my co-host, Steve Brandau, Supervisor of Fresno County. Hey, Darius, back-to-back uh, -back nights? Back-to-back -back nights. Uh, thank you for uh, running and hosting the show last night, Steve. No problem. And then uh, Mike Rabasi, City Council Member of City of Fresno, representing Northwest Fresno. Uh, which Bullard High School resides in Northwest Fresno. Did did uh, Mike did did you get sued today? Did you get not yet? No. Okay, oh. it's a good day then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we have a great panel for you this evening. Uh, we're gonna. The main topic is Bullard High School and racism at Fresno Unified. We have Keisha Thomas, uh, a trustee with Fresno Unified. Uh, she's going to be with us here momentarily. Marcelino Valdez, who is the Bullard High School PTA uh, president. Uh, PTA stands for Parent Teacher Association or is it Post Traumatic Association? <laughs> Marcelino. There's actually an S in there, believe it or not. It's PTSA. PTSA. Yeah, uh, it's Parent Teacher Student Association. Got it. So okay. There's an S in there as well. PTSA. Thank you for that correction. Uh, we take corrections at uh, GV Wire without, we, we're not worried about it. if we make a mistake, we come out right away and uh, apologize and correct it. We also have Emerald Mitchell, who is a mother of the Bullard High School student that was involved, uh, somehow involved in this uh, episode last week. And we're going to uh, be talking to her uh, about her perspective on, on all of this. Um, Marcelino is on. Keisha says she's running a few minutes late. And Emerald is not on yet, but they all have confirmed to be on this show. And have a lively show and hope that uh, we'll hear, hear from them. So, Darius, I think it's important to know that we reached out to some of the other principals involved in the story as well, right? Yes. So, go ahead. I know, I know we reached out to the superintendent, uh, other people. We wanted to get a lot of people, but Honestly, once the charges of racism start flying around, Darius, people get really nervous. And so we do, um, you know, we thank Marcelino for great. Look, it's not a, it's not a light, uh, laughable subject tonight on Unfiltered. You know, we're talking about a photograph that was distributed from Bullard High, from the weight room. Uh, we, you know, we, the, it's been all over the news over the last week. Uh, there's an apparent KKK a uh, hat or hood uh, that the student is wearing. And I mean, that just uh, just took over um, the airwaves for most of last week. And it, it really only got knocked off by the craziness that's going on at City Hall. So, uh, I mean, it's a big deal. And we, we, do, we do thank Marcelino for coming on. And I hope uh, Keisha sticks to her guns and she's on in a few minutes and Emerald as well. Um, okay, we have a poll to put up. Uh, talks about racism, but before that, Mike, did you have a, any comments? Yeah, I just wanted, I mean, our audience probably knows this, but for anyone watching, um, you know, we have a very tenacious staff and we tried our best to make sure this is a forum for anybody that wants to talk. You saw last night, we had a lot of differing views. We want to hear from all sides on a matter. Unfortunately, some folks, they may not be as open to transparency, they don't want to come forward, but they've been given the opportunity multiple times. And we're going to continue to do that. This, this is called unfiltered, because we do talk about topics that typically people don't want to talk about. But that's what we need to do as a community. We need a public forum, where we're not afraid to talk about issues that challenge us, whether it's corruption at City Hall, or it's, you know, uh, issues right. related to the COVID crisis. Okay, let's dive. Good points, Mike. Really good point. Let's dive in. Let's put up the poll. Is racism against Blacks widespread in Fresno? This was a social media poll GV Wire put up last week, and here's the results. Um, so 74% say no. Almost 26% say yes, racism against Blacks is widespread in Fresno. Now, uh, we also... the, the uh, 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 according to ESRI, e -S -R -I, the population mix in, Fres in the city of Fresno is 8% African-American. So it's noteworthy to, to point that out. 8% uh, African-American, 25.6% uh, of, of the folks on Facebook social media poll say, said, uh, yes, there is uh, racism. Okay, 
let's uh, with that out of the way, let's get into um, while we're waiting for Keisha and uh, Emerald, let's get um, let's get uh, Marcelino's perspective on on what happened last uh, last week. Um, So, so Marcelino, just kind of give us a perspective on what you have heard while we're waiting for Keisha to get on. Keisha and Emerald. And actually, I'm going to uh, get a, get this out to our producer, make sure that uh, we're calling Emerald, because she committed to being here at 6 o'clock. Emerald Mitchell, mother of the Bullard High School student, committed to being on this show. Uh, so please con contact her um, um, to make sure she's... She's going to be on the show. Okay, Marcelino. Yeah, sure. Uh, first, Take thanks away. for thanks for having me on the show to discuss this. I mean, uh, unfortunately, this isn't the topic I was hoping to discuss when coming back to GBWire. But uh, yeah, so I'm on the PTSA, and one of our board members is the one that brought this to my attention, and uh, she was obviously very upset and concerned with uh, the image that. She said her daughter forwarded her, and uh, she was very concerned with uh, this not being the first case. Uh, and so, to me, it was important that uh, first off I listened to her, and that uh, I took the way that she was feeling uh, very serious. I mean, uh, she's an important member of the board, but also she's a member of the Black community that uh, shared and expressed her concerns with me. And so, to me, I thought it was important that uh, you know we get out in front of this. Um, I'm sorry. No, keep going. Uh, Keisha okay. just joined us. I was just uh, saying hello to her while you were uh, talking. Okay, keep okay. going, Marcelino. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, when it was brought to my attention, uh, I started, you know, calling around, asking for, you know, what was going on, what the situation was. Uh, a lot of this because their minors wasn't, uh, you know, out in the open. Had to talk to some people, but uh, it, it, it's very disturbing. I know. Uh, a lot of students that uh, were impacted uh, were very vocal on how they felt. And, you know, I, if, if the perception that uh, there is racism uh, is in our community, I think it's important to listen and, and make sure that we understand uh, what that is uh, making them feel like. If, if I know for, for myself, uh, you know, being Hispanic, um, you know, I have friends and family that uh, have also uh, told me that they've sometimes ex experienced racism. So I think it's important that uh, when someone tells you that, that we listen. And so um, I'm not sure if you wanted to, I know we were waiting on uh, Trustee Thomas and I think she's on. So I can tune back in if you'd like to cut to her. And I yeah, can- let's, Yeah, let's do that. Uh, first okay. of all, Keisha uh, or Trustee Thomas, welcome. You're on mute. If you can unmute your mic. There you go. Can you hear well, us? Well, I didn't. I didn't want to say something, and then you know, and you guys are talking, and <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, I think I think I was talking about I was mumbling something about Brandau. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You, you guys, you and Brandau talk a lot about different uh, policy issues. At least on this show, you guys do. But I came uh, close to converting well, her. I came close to converting her to a conservative Republican, but I think I lost the opportunity. I think she's long gone now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm on the other side, brother. Um, you know, funny, funny enough, Brandau runs for me at, at events, so he he won't talk to me. <laughs> so Keisha, we're, we're gonna start by uh putting up we have a clip of uh your video from uh last week the Edison and Buller students stand against racism post. Yeah, and, so, and just so you know, um, some of the kids are willing to come on the show as well. So oh, let's good. plan some time for them to be able to come and speak about their feelings. Um, they, because this, they, is this, is, this is really not about me. So, you know. Are they gonna come tonight or not? Not, to, not tonight because I didn't front load the parents. I was so busy. Um, I didn't get to front load parents and ask for permission. So not tonight, but um, I have a discussion with them next week. Um, where we're all sitting down and having a conversation and then they can, you know, if their parents choose to allow them to do that, then they okay. will be able to come on and speak their, speak their feelings. Perfect. So we're going to take a, a, about a minute or two pause right now and show the video. I, I believe it was last week uh, on the news, on the news release from uh, trustee Thomas. So let's uh, put yeah. that on. 
the administration at Fresno Unified School District have been complacent in covering up some of these instances of racial intimidation. Most recently, the Facebook account. And we also have one at our middle schools, which has just been uncovered over the weekend. I think that this is a district issue. And I think, I think that uh, in the new Office of Community Affairs, which I'm a part of, uh, I think that this is an issue facing the BIPOC community. We all know that Fresno Unified, we have a history um, in the working place as well as with our black students of not being equitable. And now we have a Ku Klux Klan issue because so many things have been ignored. We demand the following actions. Immediate discipline of students involved in opposing and capturing damage. The enrollment of all students and cultural sense of training. The immediate discipline of staff members who are supervising these students. In order to combat this issue, there needs to be a special commission formed to study the district and its response to racial issues, specifically surrounding intimidation through white supremacy. When you hit an issue, an issue that is particularly sensitive to the African-American BIPOC community, I think you start there and then you broaden the scope of, uh, of, of bringing unity to our community, of, of, of seeking justice, re rebuking those oppressive things that come up in our community, defending those that can't defend themselves, and then speaking for people that can't speak for themselves. Uh, Keisha, you want to just briefly elaborate on what you, because it was a longer speech that you made. We just had a, a brief section of it. You want to kind of maybe tell the audience, because some of the audio also got garbled up, kind of what was the essence of your presentation? This was last week, is that right? This, yes, sir. This was last week. So the <laughs> essence of my presentation is that we have so long allowed this these types of things in Fresno. And let's just make it clear, it's not only Fresno Unified. Clovis has some of the most terrible instances of racism that happens at their facilities, period. And then let's just talk about the board level. Miss Yolanda, Trustee Yolanda, has been death, death, death threats to her, all kinds. Of, so it's not just Fresno Unified. It's a cultural thing where we have to stand up and stop allowing people to treat our babies this way. This is, and, and our employees, you know, it's not just, it's not one-sided. You know, you can't um, treat employees terribly because they're of color. And, and I don't care what color that is. Our Asian sisters and brothers have the, some of the same issues. So the bottom line is that we have swept these types of um, unnecessary, it's an unnecessary culture that some people still embrace. We have swept these things under the rug so much that these kids are so tired that they're ready to stand up and they wanna fight for their rights, which I, I, can't, I, I can't not say it's not okay. And I don't care what the other student looks like. It's not just because of that one incident. It's because of the black face. It's because, you know, it's, it's so many different things. And one of the things I didn't know is the young lady that did blackface, um, they protected her more than they checked on the students who were impacted by her choice. You know, and kids do silly things. So that's the bottom line, we all have. But most of us are very careful about how we do those things because we know some of them you can't come back from. So, you know, the bottom line is they're tired and they wanna fight and they want people to treat them the correct way. They don't want teachers calling them the N word or saying, well, if you could say Nick, uh, then I could say Nick, er. Like these are the things that have been happening over time to kids and people don't see them until kids explode, right? So their social emotional status is off the chain and they don't have anybody to speak for them. So not only am I willing to speak, help them speak out, I don't wanna speak for them because I'm an old lady. I'm an old lady compared to an 18 year old and I don't know what they're going through. I only know what I went through at Bullard and it was not always fun. And, there, and, and you guys have heard my testimony over and over again. It, it, I haven't been to Bullard High School as a student in 30 years. But then my son, my, my middle son goes to football practice where he has Arax calling him a nigga and he decides he's not playing for Bullard anymore. Okay, and he ends up playing it. Edison. 
Could you tell an uh, audience, uh, you, said, you said ARAX, who is ARAX? Yeah. Oh, he's a football coach at Bullard. Okay. You know, so, so my son, when he was starting high school, my 23 year old, when he was starting high school, he said, mom, I'm not going to play football for them because the coach is saying this to me. And I'm not going to play. And this was before I became a trustee. I was still a teacher. I think I might have been a teacher. I wasn't sure of what to do. And when people are unsure of what to do about situations, they just sit back or they try to get, find their ways out of them. So my son went to play for someone else. So when we have teachers like this doing things like that, and then you have students do silly things, well, we're constantly not doing anything about it. So now we have to. What, so, so that that Keisha, that is it. Keisha, so you went to Bullard, and then you you said your son is going to play in at Bullard, uh, at working at, as as going to school at Bullard right now. No, my middle son went to Bullard. My twenty three year old went to Bullard. So he 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 went to Bullard for practices before he was getting ready to go into. He left um what is Tanaya, and he was going into Bullard, and he was doing the practices and stuff like that with the Bullard team. And he was like, I'm not going to that school. So now my baby, he does go to Bullard and I do worry about him because I'm standing up like everybody else. So which is, is there going to be a teacher that comes after my kid? Is there going to be another kid to come after my kid? But just like I'm expecting all the rest of these kids to go to school, I'm going to expect for mine to go to school too. Now, if something happens, I expect for you to find help, but I'm going to stick up for my kid and I'm going to be at that school every day if I have to, to make sure that he's okay. But it's not okay for a kid to treat each other like that. And it's not okay for us to have a culture where we have teachers saying unnecessary things to students. Why is it, so by the way, just for the audience, we invited the principal at uh, Bullard High School, which is Armin Terigian. We invited Bob Nelson, the superintendent for Fresno Unified, and they've both decli declined to come on the show. Now, uh, now let me tell you, um, uh, Armin is one of my really good friends. He just got this job. He didn't. He didn't start this. You know, he's been at over at tonight. With all due respect, he didn't, Bob Nelson's oh, blacklisted this show. We've given him time and time again opportunities oh, wait, to come on. Wait, I didn't say Bob Nelson. Wait, okay. hold on, Mike. I didn't say Bob all Nelson. Right. I'm talking about Armin. <laughs> now, Armin's down. a great guy. He was a he was a Tanaya. So, He's a great community so, person. Yes. Yeah. Ar Armin is one of my close close friends, and he just got this job. So I'm not gonna knock Armin about what he walked into, okay? But Armin went to Bullard with me while I was experienced racism. So I know he understands where I'm coming from. Now, on the other hand, I expect for him to do something about the situation situations that happen at his campus. And I expect for him to build a better culture because he's starting fresh and it's really easy for him to do that. Let's, so let's, I do expect those things. Keisha, let's talk about the culture because you, you just said earlier, these ki kids are kids. And you know, we've done, all done crappy things as you know, junior hires, as high schoolers. What, what, uh, what responsibility do the teachers, the principals, and you know, and, and the administration go all the way up half to make sure we have the right culture. At not only Buller, you just said, hey, a lot of schools do. So, you know, what, what responsibility do I mean do the teachers and the principals and the uh, and the administration have on this? You know, let me tell you something. When I walked into to becoming a trustee, um, my friends used to laugh at me because they would say, you know, really. Do you really think that's gonna happen? Do you really think you can? Yes, I do, and yes, I do. I think both. Um, I'm not being naive. Listen, treat your kid, I'm, I'm gonna treat as a teacher, because you gotta remember I'm a teacher first. I'm gonna treat your kid like I treat my kid. If I have a problem with your kid, I'm gonna call home. If I have a problem with something that's being said in the class, I'm gonna call home. Like there's certain things that I did as a culture in my classroom. I built culture in my classroom where all my kids watched out for each other. It's something that has to be in eight and intentional. It has to be intentional. If it's not intentional, it's not gonna work and everybody has to be on the same page. I know that's a really hard thing to do, but all you have to do is do the right thing and treat people well. You treat people how you wanna be treated and you treat kids like you want people to treat your own personal kids. And when it's too tough, you need to quit. Okay. Um... You make some make some really good points. I want to come back to you, Keisha, in a minute, but I want to hear from uh, Marcelino uh, on 
his perspective as a president of the PTSA at uh, Bullard, uh, you know, what happened? Um, is there equity? Is justice going to get served uh, for these kids, for the other kids that are, that are you know, that are going through this, that are, that are you know, Trustee Thomas said this has been going on for a while. So, uh, you know, the call is, it, does the culture need to get changed or is there, a, is, or is there not a cultural problem, whether it's a Bullard or anywhere else at Fresno Unified? Marshall yeah, I'd United. like to address, yeah, one thing that uh, Trustee Thomas said about the, uh, this is a white supremacy incident. And I don't see it that way. Um, I did have one parent who called me and uh, she told me that uh, she knows the kids involved personally. And uh, what she's telling me that two of those kids uh, happen to be Hispanic. And uh, the, 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 I guess these kids were working out. These were sleeves that were cut off of a t-shirt is uh, what I was told. Uh, one kid apparently was, was trying to act like a ninja, put them all on. Uh, and the kids, I guess, asked them to take a picture. And the kid behind them, I guess, uh, pointed it up. So to me, it, it doesn't appear to me that this is a white supremacy uh, incident. Uh, now, if it made people feel the same feeling as someone that does uh, believe in that, uh, you know, white supremacy ideals, then I mean, either way, we need to address this. These are kids that uh, should be given an opportunity to, uh, you know, learn from this. This is a teachable moment, I believe, not only just Bullard, but I think district-wide, citywide, uh, this is a great opportunity for us to to learn from this and you know for what my understanding here's the most unfortunate thing is that i'm hearing that two of these kids happen to be foster kids uh, there are two foster kids two hispanic kids that uh, are now uh you know i i feel like they're they're being uh seen as expendable and it's unfortunate i think these kids deserve an opportunity to make it right um, i don't condone or excuse what they did but I do believe the consequence uh, is too severe. I've had num a number of calls who are asking why the incident of, of blackface wasn't treated the same way. Uh, that student was not expelled. And these two students who, who if it is true they're in the foster care system, uh, you know, they, they may not have uh, the resources to defend themselves. And so I think it's unfortunate that uh, if, if that is the case that these two kids are not uh, able to make this right and tell their side of the story. And so uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I made that point about white supremacy. I don't see this as being a white supremacy issue. I do think there are issues that uh, have happened at Bullard, whether it's the blackface, the, uh, uh, the, the hat that appears to be like KKK. Uh, I've heard of uh, a teacher, uh, as Trustee Thomas had mentioned, I heard of another teacher uh, one of the parents called me uh, that her student who happens to be black said that uh, there's a teacher on campus that has still not been held accountable for calling her the n-word or saying the n-word around her. Um, and so to me, if, if these things, uh, you know, if there's more than one incident, then I think not only the school, but the district does need to take it serious. Uh, as Trustee Thomas said, maybe there should be a special commission, uh, but I think it's district-wide. It shouldn't just be uh, labeling Bullard as a uh, white supremacy or uh, a racist school. I, I don't believe that. My kid, I have one son that goes to Bullard. Uh, all my kids are in the Bullard district, and I don't see it that way. Does that mean that there won't be incidents where, you know, kids do things that uh, are questionable? And and maybe there are some that have uh, some, you know, some racist, uh, you know, undertones, but I don't think for the majority of the Bullard district that doesn't feel that way, I don't think they should be labeled that way. Uh, good point, Marcelino. Let me, let me go to uh, Steve real quick, and then we'll get back to Keisha comments. Yeah, I, I really um, agree a lot with Marcelino, and I'm actually, in a way, glad that he said it first, because he's a Hispanic guy, and I'm an old white guy, uh, so it's really great that it came out from him, but Keisha, you know, what you have in this situation, in this white supremacy situation, is you have a, a lack of white people in the story. What you've got is a bunch of Hispanic people and some African-American students and a bunch of leadership and you're throwing around white supremacy very cavalierly and you don't have any instances of that. Now, am I saying that none of that exists, you know, district wide or even, you know, um, uh, the Bullard High wide? No, I'm not saying that the stuff doesn't exist, but 
you guys seems to me, and I think a lot of people would agree that you guys did a classical <clears throat> knee jerk reaction. I'm not saying it was just you could have included the superintendent. I had a conversation with him the other day, you know, when this stuff rolls out and that photo starts spreading on social media, I mean, there's a lot of very instant reaction. Uh, but uh, one thing that could have happened is you, could, you guys could have found out that the kids were Hispanic first, right? That would have been very easy. That takes about an hour uh, to pull the kids together. Somebody like Armin or Bob or somebody could have gone in there. Somebody that, you know, works Bullard all the time could have been there and said, hey, what were you guys doing? What was this about? Instead, you let the adults fire off, especially, you know, you and I are in the same world. We're politicians. We want to make a while the sun is shining. So we get out there in front of the actual investigation, get way ahead of everybody and start making a bunch of claims like it's white supremacy. Now, you know, I'd be interested to know, I mean, in that little video, white supremacy was mentioned as, and you used as well as our white students. And so Keisha, now that we know that they weren't white kids, do you take that back? I take back the fact that the kids did, who did it were not white. I do take that back. But a lot of other instances, honey, blackface should have been dealt with in a better way. This instance, I'm sorry, but yeah, it might be a knee jerk reaction. I'm not sure about that. But it's the actions that people take when they should treat people well. This, this is not a good action. And I don't care what you say. I don't know what the statements were. I have not talked to the parents. And, and bottom line is, the sad part is black students get kicked out of school on a higher rate. They do some of the same things that other students do and they don't get treated the same way. So when you come for me talking about, maybe I should take it back or maybe it's this, that or the other. No, it's not. The problem is, is that we have not gotten out in front of this problem and it has snowballed and it is a pure mess. It's a mess. Okay. They have, have you, have you looked at, some of the, um, the, I had a student the other day, his parent called me and says, Miss Thomas, these kids are putting bananas in my, in my hoodie and calling me, calling me monkeys. Like this is a problem. So I'm sorry that this incident happens to be one that's probably going to be pushed way out there, but you know what? We have to start taking the, our kids, and our parents have to start, and, and I hope he, I hope he's not, I don't know if he's a foster kid. I don't know anything about this kid, but you know what's funny is that more people stood up for Terry Sladek, jacking that kid around in, with his backpack, talking about he thought he had a gun. Then they're taking, but then they do, they're doing right now. People well, should not have taken up for, taken mean, up for Terry Sladek. <laughs> people take up for adults nonstop in this world. And Terry got out there and assaulted, almost assaulted a kid, and nobody wanted to fight back about that. You know, that kid had so many issues you wouldn't even have, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be, be, begin to believe it. But nobody fought for that kid. At some point, this has got to stop. So Keisha, here's my question, uh, my $6 million question of the day is, so since the blackface thing, you know, which was, I don't know what, about three years ago, what have you guys done on the board with the superintendent? What has Bob done? at your request or direction from the board. This has to come from the adults, right? What have you guys done policy-wise to affect these changes in the last three years? You, you know, you talk about it's time to make changes, but you guys are the ones that make the changes. And we did. And you know what? Let me just start by saying this because this, this is a serious point. Number one, the KKK is a white supremacy. So let's just start there. Number two, we have made changes the first change we did is we put in the, um, the, the, the clause and we said no, the anti-racist clause. So we put that in and we said that we were not gonna allow people to do this anymore. So this is post uh, white blackface. This is post blackface. So now it, everything's set into motion. We're not allowing teachers to behave a way that they're not supposed to behave. And we're not gonna allow students to do it either. I don't care if they're black, white, green, or indifferent. If you did something wrong, especially if it's a hatred, racist crime against another person, we're handling it. Well, I, I, that's I, it. I, I wanna turn it over to some of the other guys. I think Mike's got a, a, you know, but to me, what it looks like is we had this event three years ago, and then we had an event last week and they're both terrible visual events, right? 
Um, and it just seems like nothing was learned in between those two events, three years apart. The, the, the adults have done a knee jerk reaction on this one. And they're calling for a bunch of measures to take place that probably should have been implemented, implemented somewhere in the three years. I'm talking about proactive, not reactive measures, not setting. No, we have, we have, no, good, no. Uh, we have, we have diversity. We have diversity and equity training. We came up with the student voice where students can start speaking. And that's where this came from. These kids finally found their voice and they're taking, they're taking action on it. We do have the cultural. The, the, do the, do the black kids at Edison getting all fired up, do they know that it's not white kids at Bullard? You know, Darius, uh, so I they, don't want to make They sure. don't care. They don't, don't care they're tired. Well, they don't care. That's the biggest, be that is they're the damn best statement you've made since I've known you. Yeah. They don't care. They, the they, facts they don't they matter. They are tired. No, the facts they're tired. don't matter. The but, fact yeah. is they're tired. They're completely tired. Yeah, and I nobody has st stood up for them. So when you stop standing up for me, I'm tired. And nobody else is going to treat me this way. And that's how those kids feel. And they're entitled to every bit of their feelings because people should not treat them that way. And then they close their mouths because you know what they say is none of the adults are going to do anything about it. Nobody's going to do anything about it because they don't really care about us black kids anyway. And that's okay. how I felt when I came to school at Bullard 30 years ago and the N-I-G-G-E-R was written across the wall. And what they did was by lunchtime, it was painted over. But do you, did you, do you think anybody ever checked on us to see how we were doing or call my parents to tell it ha said it happened to me? No, nobody told anything. So these kids, 30 years later, guess what? They said, we're going to stand up and you're going to do something about it. And I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. Okay, uh, Trustee Thomas, I'm just curious. So there's the overall issue, which has been an ongoing issue for decades, and it still exists today, racism at, a, at the school level for kids, whether it was when I was in school, when you were in school, or God forbid today. But the other issue, I want to point to something you mentioned, and I'm a little curious. You said the kids are tired, and I can understand that, mm -hmm. because I thought when this story broke, and I, I kind of wanted to get the facts straight because I thought, oh my God, this is terrible. How can this happen? I thought it was white kids. And this is clearly a KKK type incident. And then as the facts come out, my question is, so you are the trustee. Are you going to go and explain to those kids, they weren't white kids. This, this was not white supremacy, but it was racism. And I mean, will you correct them with that? Because why I worry they face trauma in their lives and they faced hate. So is this the teachable moment where you're like, okay, this is not one of those cases but we still have to keep the fight. But wh which adult is going to explain to them what really happened? Well, yes, but the cult. Okay, there's a couple pieces. So yes, I have a meeting with them next week, and we will talk about that. I have to see how they feel because I really don't know. I haven't asked them. Hmm. The these are just my personal opinions about how I feel that they feel. So let's just keep that clear. The kids have not told me. You know, Miss Thomas, I don't care. They have not. I said that. So let's start there. Um, the second part is that um, when we have that discussion, that'll be a personal discussion. And if they decide they want to speak about it, then that'll be that'll be their choice. I, I, I don't want again, I don't want to take their voice. There's some things that we all need to work on. You know, we all have problems in our world. Sure. But this is just one of them that we have to start, you know. Yes, blackface happened then. We did all these changes at Fresno Unified. We were praying that it would be better. And then we have another three or four cases, you know, where kids are putting teachers and employees on the, the websites and whatever, you yeah. know, and there are cases and whatever. Even so it's all about. kinds of stuff. Yeah, there probably yeah, are cases. There's all kinds of stuff yeah. happening. I just want to go back though, when you meet with the kids as we get more, and this could be for anything, as we get more <clears> facts, <throat> will you fill them in with the facts of the case? Because as the council, yeah, what I'm worried about as the council area, I'm worried, I'm worried about more division from this and this snowballing out of control because I want to get to the facts. I want whoever is responsible punished. And I will disagree with one thing. I, I can tell you on both sides of the political spectrum, a lot of my residents in Northwest Fresno are not happy with the behavior of your colleague and that student. I know that the media reported it the way they did, but I can tell you a lot of folks are very unhappy. I'm sorry, with Mike, that. which colleague are you talking about? Could, could Trusty Sladek, when she had mentioned how oh. the student treats. <laughs> I know there were a lot of people that in the media, but there were also a lot of people that are parents and teachers and just Republicans and Democrats thinking that's not right. And because it's never happened but, before. But, so. but nobody fought for it. Nobody fought for that kid that was probably also a foster kid. 
Nobody fought for that kid at all. Nobody came to a community meeting. No, I saw more people come about face masks than I saw come and see about kids who have been assaulted and different things, molested. I have seen more people come what, to that board meetings? meeting about face masks well, oh, okay. than I have seen come about serious issues about kids. Listen, I'm here for kids. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do anything. I, if I can protect the kid, I'm going to protect them. I don't care what, I'm multicultural. I don't care what color they are. But again, with that brings us back to who is the most underserved? Who is, who are the students who are least likely to? Who are the ones that are the furthest behind? I wouldn't want to go to school either if I was treated that way at school. Why do I want to go and learn? I had a oh. valedictorian um, last year, African-American girl, she had straight A's all her years. And then she comes to this one teacher and all of a sudden she has a B. Like, come on, you, you think you must be, you must be the hardest teacher ever. You know, so things like this happen to our kids over and over and over again. And I'm telling you, this is just the straw that broke the camel's back. Was and that it's a so bad. The incident of the young, young, young lady, the valedictorian? No, I don't okay. think it, it was. It was in the district. No. I was just wondering. No. Okay, gotcha. No. Okay. It was in the district. It was a district issue. Okay. So, like you know, between all, all of this stuff, and then they start, okay, and I'll be quiet. After well, all this stuff, and now we have all of these, um, all of these uh, social media tap-ins from all mm -hmm. over the place, you know, with all these things that we want to close our eyes to and pretend that they never happen anymore. You know, it's time to open our eyes and maybe we need to start doing a little more digging. But I also think that the social media, I think they should be held accountable too. I put a call in to, to, um, to Instagram because you know what? I need some answers because why didn't you take this down? Or, you know, if a naked body goes up there, then you take it down. But if a hate crime goes up, you leave it up. It's a good question. So a really good question. So it, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not just about us. Go ahead. You know, this is the Keisha Thomas show. So go ahead, Darius. No, no, I, I, totally. This is a Keisha Thomas show, but, uh, and some of us are going to jump in and talk for a second if we can't. No, but no, you make some, you make, you bring some really interesting points. I want to take a minute. I've got several questions myself, and I want to get Marcelino's take on this as well. But I want to start with some of the comments. There's a ton of comments on our, on our post. Uh, Inga talks about have you, by the way, I don't want you to answer them, just be aware of it. And then we're going to, get to them in a minute. Inga talks about, have you offered any additional history lessons for the kids? Uh, and then- Wait, how about that one? Uh, have you offered, not, don't answer it now, but just be aware, we're gonna weave them into your, in this conversation. Inga talks about, have you offered any additional history lessons for the kids? We're gonna, I'm gonna come, actually my question revolves around that. Uh, Vicky Cheney says, what consequences for Arax for saying what he said? And then Jimmy Martinez says, uh, my son goes to Bullard and black racism is not any stronger than Mexican or Asian racism. So, uh, so racism is all over the place uh, at Bullard or some of these the schools. However, uh, uh, and then there was another comment that, that blacks get uh, are the loudest in getting this. Uh, I think it was Jimmy Martinez that said, I agree with this pool. Blacks are just the loudest about it. Anyhow. Here's, so it sounds like racism uh, has been going on a long time at Bullard. Uh, is that Keisha, right? Would you say, and just a yes or no, uh, yes. Are you running yeah, out? Yeah, but you know, I don't want, yeah, but I don't want to minimize the other problems. But yes, it has gone on for a long time at Bullard and it's the most highlighted at Bullard. Got it. Uh, none of these kids that participated in this episode last week were white. We know that also, right? So uh, we've known that all, the public hasn't known that just recently that we found out, I think Marcelino talked about it, um, I may before he came on the show, two, two of them are foster kids, they're Hispanic, uh, one as a, as a black uh, student from what I understand, but none of them were white. But, you know, it's a cultural thing. So it's what it sounds like when I'm listening to everybody on this show, it's a kind of a cultural thing. So I'm trying to figure out if we know we've had this culture at Fresno Unified and you did something about three years ago, you put that legislation together that, you know, and maybe we can el elaborate on that. Uh, I have two questions. Number one, why haven't we taken this more seriously? Because none of us, I know on this panel or really in our community, uh, wants racism, those folks that do shame on them. But 
if we know this culture exists and has existed, why do we keep on allowing it to happen from the very top, which is really the board, board of directors, to the superintendent, all the way down? Why do we allow this to get perpetuated? Uh, what, have we, what are we going to actually stop this thing? Uh, what, because if it's a cultural thing, we got to get this cultural training. We got to make sure people don't use the N-word. Hey, I'm an immigrant Muslim American. And I, I, hey, I've been a victim of, of, of not racism, but of discrimination. I, I, I get it. But what have we done? What are we doing as, a, again, the board of trustees is above the superintendent. So it gives direction to the superintendent. The superintendent then goes and hires the team, the principals, all these folks, the athletic director, the <laughs> facilities director, all those guys. What have we done? And what are we doing, number one? That's my one question, to stop, change this culture. If, if it sounds like there's racism has been going on for a long time. What are we oh, doing to, to stop that? Number two, I mean, seriously change the culture. And number two, these two kids, foster kids, they're going to get expelled, is what, what we hear. They're going to get expelled. You guys are going to vote on it tomorrow, uh, potentially. To get, uh, and kids... You said in the beginning, do stupid things. Why are they getting expelled, Darius? What did they do wrong? Well, uh, I, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, the, the board is going to- Why are they getting expelled? The board is going to decide- Have they got a track record? Have they done a bunch of stuff over the years? Are they real bad actors? That's not what I'm hearing. So, so the question, I don't know. I'm not I heard they're uh, 3.5 GPA student athletes, actually. Okay. I, I'm going to come to Marcelino next, so maybe Marcel, and then then go back to. Uh, and again, I want to say uh, Superintendent Nelson uh, has been invited, and so has the principal uh, Terigian to come on the show, and they have declined to come on the show. And we want to. I'm really grateful, first of all, Keisha, for you to come on the show and address these difficult issues and questions. But I'm tired of hearing the same thing over and over again. If racism exists, why has this administration and the board not taken more strong action to change the culture and address this one? Number two, why are these two kids getting expelled and not going? They're two Hispanic foster kids. And say, hey, wait a minute. Before we expel you, can we sit down? And, can you learn? Make it a learning thing so these kids can learn from their behavior. We bring the teachers that are using the N-word and whoever else is using the N-word at Bullard High School and say, guys, this is not acceptable. And kids are under incredible peer pressure in the, you know, K through 12. They do what their buddies tell them. If there's a teacher that tells them to do it, they like the teacher, they follow their rule. How do we change that culture again, A, and B, why are these kids getting expelled? I'm gonna go to Marcelino since you've only had one minute to talk uh, on the Keisha Thomas show. And then we're going to go to Keisha after that. Two questions. If the culture exists, why hasn't the administration and the board done anything to fix it? And why are these two kids setting, getting set an example out of, expelled, probably ruined their life? They may not be able to go to college. And, and, not, and instead of saying, wait a minute, we have a systematic issue. Let's fix that first. Marcelino, you take it on first. And then we go to Trustee Thomas. Yeah, so I think uh, changing the culture um, of, of how people interact and uh, eliminating or eradicating racism, I don't know that that's possible. Um, I do believe that there could be some training opportunities where teachers are training to, to certain topics uh, so that we can do a better job of helping people understand how comments, posts, uh, words, actions, those things are hurtful. They can hurt per a person. Uh, and, and these are things that they'll live with forever. And so this uh, could, if, if you're a black student, a Hispanic student, and you're, you're discriminated against, uh, these can be things that you will stay, they'll stay with you for the rest of your life. And sometimes they can be self-fulfilling prophecies, things you hear, things you're, you're told. And so I think it's important that we do some serious training. Uh, but uh, as far as, uh, you know, I think next steps, I do believe that uh, this, the district uh, does need to provide uh, more resources to all schools so that uh, they can implement uh, more strict measures. 
I don't believe these kids, uh, and, and I'll petition to you right now, Trustee Thomas, I don't believe if the decision comes to you, I don't believe they should be expelled. I think this is a teachable moment. Uh, these kids deserve an opportunity. As Darius said, uh, this will have a lasting effect on them and hopefully uh, these kids aren't thrown out. And uh, I do have to make a comment with all due respect, Trustee Thomas, I do believe that uh, your press conference may have had uh, added fuel to the fire in, in calling for more severe action and uh, the community uh, kind of rallied behind you. Uh, I do believe that uh, that was an opportunity for you to step back and call for, you know, for an investigation, for more, uh, a deeper understanding of what's going on. Uh, and I, but I do understand emotions run high. And I think that uh, you were doing uh, what you felt was uh, in, in the best interest of the community. But I do believe that may have led to the severe consequences these kids now face. I'm gonna, so we're gonna go to uh, Keisha next, but uh, Inga has got a really good question. Why not have the kids do a project and report and research the history of KKK so they understand this? So, so that's a uh, great, another great question, both from Marcelino, uh, head of the PTSA for Bullard and also for uh, Trustee Thomas. But uh, first of all, are these kids gonna get expelled tomorrow? Can you can you even talk you know, about it? I mean, you may not be able to talk well, about it. Well, let me let me, let, let me tell you this first. Number one, they haven't even had a hearing yet. So let's just start there. So whoever wherever you guys are getting all this information from, this is information I'm not even privy to. I have no idea what nationality these kids are. Honestly, I have no idea what nationality they are. I know that we are not voting on that tomorrow because nobody's told me you know, that we're going to vote on that tomorrow unless we go into closed session and they ambush me. Number three, usually the kids have a, a, um, some kind of a hearing before they even come to us. So, you know, there's, there's some steps in between before I even get to see the case, get to see what nationality the kid is, any of that. There's some steps before I even get to see that. So you guys have more information about the situation than I do. And, um, for the record, Anytime I stand for any kid, if any kid calls me and tells me that they need help and I need to stand up for them, and if I need to stand up for my, my community, I'm going to do it. I don't care what anybody says, and I will always tell the truth. If I'm wrong, I will come back and say that I'm wrong. But right now, I feel that everything that I'm doing is justified. And uh, quite frankly, um, my kids, my Black kids have been suspended for less and kicked out of school and lives ruined. You know what happens to black kids? They get, they get, um, I'm sorry, they get punishment and then they have to learn about what the action should have been after they've been punished. So there's never any learning in the beginning and then. So, you know. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to Mike first, uh, then to Steve, but um, so, so, so you're saying that, let me just clarify that. So these kids haven't had a hearing they're not going to get expelled tomorrow. I'm hoping that somebody is going to represent these kids. So that, I mean, kids, I don't know, they're, they're 16, 17 year old Hispanic kids. Uh, they're not white. They're going to be ex potentially go through a hearing for something stupid that did, they did. Uh, but uh, are, will they have representation? Uh, in other words, because they're foster kids, right? So I don't know if, uh, will the parents be able to come in and, and, in front of a hearing or do they just have to represent themselves against the board or the attorneys for the district? No, 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 oh, no. They have, a, okay. they have a hearing where their parents get to come in. They okay. get to speak for them. It's a, it's a whole thing. And, and you know, the process is, um, it, it's a process. It's just yes. like any other process that you have to go through. When got you it. do something wrong, you get a speeding ticket. You don't pay a speeding ticket. Guess what? Got you got to go to court. Got so, it. you know, it, it's, it's just something that they have to go through. Got it. So, okay. And, and I don't, I don't know. That, I don't know that they're going to be expelled or not, but there needs to be some harsh consequences because this needs to stop. And it should have stopped. It should have stopped in 2019. But none of these kids were white though. Right. It doesn't matter, Darius. It's the action. It's oh. the action. We have to stop kids from taking these kinds of actions. And, and somebody said, well, why don't we have the teachers um, go to training? Listen, if you're an adult, it, it doesn't take rocket scientists to teach a, treat a kid well. It's not rocket science. But, but Darius, let me jump Mike, in get here. It. This Please is why I'm concerned Mike. as the council member for this area. And this is a school's issue, but I want to help if I can. Okay, here's my issue, though. I get word that a school in my district has white supremacy that's widespread because of this incident. But you said that you didn't even know what the kids' races were before the press conference. Wouldn't it be important to know that beforehand? 
because now it's you a white a bunch supremacy of kids that are really upset, oh. and now they think there's white supremacists doing this. And we've just had this terrible shooting in Buffalo. Like facts are kind of important. And now we've inflamed the it's, situation. It's the action, Mike. It's the yes. action. But you are saying that these kids are white supremacists. They're not even white. That's my, they're, they're racist, it's a, perhaps. It's, Oh, Mike, they're white okay. supremacist Hispanics. No, no, no. Hold on, Steve. In all seriousness, this is what I'm, I'm no, I really am worried no, about. No, serious, no, it, that's what we're saying. No, 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 no. I'm really worried about this because right now the word is spreading that Bullard, because of this incident now, they're in the, 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 the psyche of our residents all over the city. Oh, it's just another racist incident, white people versus everyone else. Or, and that's not what's happening. There's so much depth to this and we don't even have all the details yet. So I'm, I'm just, I'm really concerned because now you have kids from Southeast Fresno, Southwest Fresno, Central Fresno, all over the city now thinking there's a bunch of racism here and it's because of a bunch of white kids. That's not what happened. So I want to get to the bottom of this and see what exactly happened. And there's another thing. I don't know much about social media, unfortunately. There's this whole ninja movement thing they're talking about. You, can you, you know anything about that? I don't know. I don't like, know like, anything of anything about a ninja movement. I don't it really get that. Sounds like somebody. And, and and here's the other part. Where was the teacher? Because had the teacher been paying attention, none of this would have happened. So whoever was supposed to be in charge of those kids at that moment should have some harsh actions as well. I don't think they need to be working for the district I, because they're not paying attention to their classroom. I got a question. You you hit the nail on the head, Keisha. Where were the teachers? Why were they not trying to stop this? So how do we get to that? Why is the district not dealing with these issues if they exist? They exist. Morris, can, I, can I make a comment real quick about that? Real quick, I apologize. Real quick. Then, um, one of the parents did bring that to my attention and said that this is common where these kids uh, will be in this weight room and there are times when they're unsupervised. This is what a parent was telling me that her student told her. Uh, that this is something that uh, is common. If it is true, I do think that uh, Principal Tarigi and the district need to investigate a little more and make sure that they're- Here's the thing. There's no way any kid should have any key to any classroom at any given time. I don't care if that be the weight room, the English room, the math room. I never left kids unsupervised in my classrooms because kids do kid things. Yeah. So I, I always try, and sometimes they do them right in front of your face. So who's in charge of the weight room? Why was it unlocked? what teacher was supposed to be in charge. And if they got in, how did they get in? There's enough cameras there for them to figure that out. So all that, I'm not saying any of that is not being investigated. It is being investigated and we just have to wait. Now it's a waiting game. Yeah, Marcelino, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was gonna ask about that because I, I recall there's open periods and I thought, I, I never used the weight room obviously, but I thought that it was left open, but maybe this is a point. Maybe it shouldn't be anymore and there should be supervision. No, it's not supposed to, it's, it's supposed to, anytime no, a kid, you coming from a teacher, anytime a kid is in a classroom, somebody is supposed to be supervising them. I think they are not supposed to be room. leaving things unlocked. Especially a weight room. Huh? I think there's so many Especially dangers a weight in a weight room. Uh, you know, yeah, kids, right try to max out, they can hurt themselves. Yep. Uh, you definitely need supervision at all times. Yep, very good point. Yep. Yep. See, we agree. Yep. There's stuff we agree on. We can get this done. <laughs> I mean, supervision is very important. <laughs> it's perfectly fair. And hopefully the district can do something yep. about that. Okay, so. Oh yeah. So we know that these kids were not white, but they, uh, they're no, gonna- No, I get... don't know that. I don't know that. The, the, How do I know that? The trustee doesn't know it, but everybody else involved in Bullard knows it. Okay. No, but no, no, no. I'm a, not, she's had at least no, two press I, conferences, though, about the item. I have right? not seen the kids. I have not seen the kids yet. I told you it has not been presented to me. And for, for your information, Mr., after, after that press conference, I've been on the road for the last two weeks. So I have not even been in Fresno. So, so does that um, mean that you, you don't know, have anybody? The gossip that you guys have been doing uh, without me and you haven't called me and talked to me to tell me that, you know, you heard this information and nor have those parents call me, you know, any, anybody is open to call me. I don't, I'm not just Fres uh, uh, Edison's trustee. I'm a Fresno Unified trustee. So any parent that needs my help can call me and talk to me. And that's the bottom line. You guys know that, you know, I'm fair, you know, I, I, I will apologize if I'm wrong. You know, if I if I'm stuck on something, I'm just stuck on it. You know, I'm 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 never gonna be a Republican. So, <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> a couple things, uh, Lanisha. 
a couple of uh, uh, viewers uh, live on Facebook Live right now. Lanisha or Senegal said, Steve, it would be great to have the exact excitement which I which I exuded um, when we consider expelling black males with first offenses, right? Because I defended these two kids. I asked, you know, are they bad kids? Are they bad students? Is there a track record? I don't think these kids, I don't even think these kids are racist. So that's where I'm at on this deal. I, I think we've watered down that word so much it doesn't even mean crap anymore. So whatever, everybody can feel differently. But but L Lanisha, to, to answer you, yes, I agree. If, if black males should not be being disciplined with no previous uh, you know, reasons and no other things that have happened in their record and they're getting expelled on first offenses, I, I thank you for bringing that to light. And Keisha, actually, you said something very similar to that a minute ago. Then we have Vicki Cheney, which I think expressed a little bit what um, Marcelino was really getting at. And I wanna, I think it's worth covering again. Vicki says, amen, don't use the kids as an example, dressed as ninjas and clowning around, teach them, don't ruin their lives for this. And I wanna say, I oh. agree with, you know, I agree with Vicki's sentiment. I mean, in, in a lot of times, this is what happens when the adults want to take over and there's a knee-jerk reaction. It can hit, happen at the county, the city, the school board. It doesn't matter. It happens all the time because we're human. The victims become these innocent kids. Now, I don't think it's right to make a KKK hat, but how is that kid supposed to learn that? Quite frankly, if they're you know a foster care kid, they may have never had a parent tell them, right? That this is right or wrong, they just, just playing stupid. You know, so they're I mean, just moving back okay. and forth. At so, one minute, it's a, at one minute it's a ninja. The next second, it's a KKK hat, and we're going to expel these kids rather than teach them. So, so wait, hold on. Did I did I one time ever say that I'm going to vote for sure to suspend to expel those kids? No, I never said I was going to vote for sure. Oh, I did I know, not do that. I know, but now, there's been a lot of so, talk. So listen, th I get it. There should be a lot of talk. There well, should be a lot, lot of scaring about, this kid. We, need, we should be scaring the heck out of these kids. Well, they may very well be scared, though. We, what, what is the status of these kids? We have no idea what they're going through mentally right now. We don't know that because, like you said, you don't even know who the kids are. Can I just so, let me jump? Let me jump in. It sounds like, OK, Trustee Thomas just said these kids are not going to get expelled or she, she, there's no vote to getting them expelled. They are going to be well represented. Uh, there's a lot of conversation about these kids having this becoming a learning lesson for all of Fresno Unified so that these kids' lives don't get damaged permanently, uh, get good training, and really go after and fix the culture from the top down. If there's a cultural issue, you, which you, there's a debate, you, 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 to, they say that there is a. I want to reclaim my statement. What's I your, want to get back on top on, of that. It's your, and I think we're going to have on. closing. Okay, so here, and I think there are also other victims that I want to discuss for a brief instant. Hold, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fit, could, could use that. What was your, re, reclaim your statement, Steve, real quick, okay. and then I'm going to go, I want to finish my. Okay. What was here's your statement? Where, here's where I was going. I mentioned the one that's obvious. These okay. three or four kids that were in the weight room. Okay, these kids, we, this should be, we always talk about teachable moments. This, this is, is a it. teachable moment, okay? Correct. These kids are not racist. Let's start there. But then what about the other people? What about whipping uh, Edison students into a frenzy when it's also built on false information? We're hurting them also. We're hurting the teachers at Bullard High when we throw them under the bus real cavalierly and we start saying that they're not good enough, they haven't done enough. Well, I, you know, this is the thing. These are the things that happen when there's a new- I didn't say reaction. that. I'm not, putting, I, I didn't I'm say not that. saying you okay. said that, All right. but there's, from the moment that we had the first press conference, Darius, there's a, there's been this heads have to roll mentality. We have to, heads have to roll on this one mentality. And it's happened with not just the four students, but the teachers, the faculty at Bullard and the whole thing is a, is a, is a screaming no, mess. No, okay. Steve, no Steve, I got, I got to stop you. Hold on. That's not true because I met with the teachers at Edison. And I said what I had to say to them. They know how I feel about them. I did not ridicule, all, I'm not saying all teachers. I'm saying there's some bad apples in the system. That's what I said. I'm so, not saying, I love, I love my teachers at Buller, especially the ones that ride for my kids. 
if you're great for kids, if you're, it's like police. People say, I hate police. No, I don't hate police. I hate bad police. I love the police, especially if they're great ones. You know, uh, a, a friend told me one time, oh, when something happens at the school, what you gonna do? Call a psychologist and tell him you got a gun at large? No, I'm not gonna do that because I like good police and I want good police on my campuses and I want good darn teachers on my campuses that treat kids well. That's what I want. I want teachers in their weight rooms when they're supposed to be. I want teachers in their classrooms when they're supposed to be. And okay. I want teachers to stick up for their kids and not be afraid to stick up for their kids when their kids Good. are being done wrong and okay. when they're right. We, okay. we, gotta, we gotta move on wow. because we got I got a couple of other topics related to this. Uh, but before uh, Steve uh, talked about his issues. So I'll, I'm gonna ask a question. Do these kids have, is there a deal made with these kids already? That's what we hear. There's a deal made. You guys are going to go to another school that you're going to get taught 45 minutes a week at most. You're going to finish out the rest of the year and maybe next year. So you're not going to get allowed to come back to Bullard. So you basically, there's a deal cut. If you want us to not to, I don't know, prosecute you or whatever, you got to take this deal. Do you know anything about that, Keisha? No, no. I, I'm telling you as a trustee, I try to keep myself out of that stuff because I need to be able to vote the right way. Now, again, I'm going to stand up for my kids. I'm not saying I'm not going to do that. But there's a certain there's a certain area where I have to make sure that I don't want I don't really want to know who that kid is until the paper is in front of my face. And then I can read that he's a 3.5 or a 4.0 or whatever. I can do that then. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to help these kids feel good. Now, the second thing is all these people on this call doing all this fussing, all these people watching, you all need to be mentors. Stand up. Go be mentors at Bullard. Go help these kids know how to live. Let them know how, how you're supposed to behave. Give them a summer job. If it's a black kid that's been getting in trouble, go over there and help them. Don't come and yell at me because this craziness has happened. Guess what? As a community, we have to come together and we have to try to fix this problem. This is not only a Fresno Unified problem, this is a Fresno problem. And the other reason why it's a Fresno problem is we have people at the at city, city of Fresno who are black that can't get jobs or can't get promotions. So it's not just the Fresno Unified problem. Got it. So here, here's, um, and I don't know why all of us are on the screen at the same time, uh, but uh, here's, so, so the question is, then these, uh, so these kids, the, none of the board members have been talking, to, uh, so the administration, I'm assuming it's Bob Nelson and the team is, uh, has made a deal. I think Marcelino may have some uh, more insider, inf more information about that, our CIA agent about yeah. this. Uh, Marcelino, tell us what you know about the deal that has been cut with these kids. They're going to be expelled. They're going to go to another school. They're not going to protest. Basically, they're not going to have a, then this is not going to become a learning moment for them. They are going to another school. They can only get, attend school for 45 minutes a week, graduate, hopefully. I don't know what's going to happen to them next year, uh, but these kids, what, what is that word, scapegoat, are yeah. going to uh, kind of fill us in on that, and we're going to, we're already seven minutes over, we're going to try and wrap up in the next uh, 10 minutes. Go ahead. Sure, I was going to make a comment about uh, the reason Trustee Thomas probably hasn't seen it is uh, there may not be an expulsion, so maybe I should clarify that, that uh, what I did here is these kids were given uh, a deal in which uh, they could pick any school except Bullard and the twins could not go to the school of the other kid and nothing would be put on their, their disciplinary record uh, if they accept this deal. So it may not come to the, the board to make a decision on there. They may have cut this deal uh, to show that, uh, you know, something was done, but I, I, you know, if it is 45 minutes, I think that, that's a that's a shame because these kids deserve better. I think they should be given an opportunity. They won't get that opportunity to to have a teachable moment if this happens. So, uh, Keisha, do you know if uh, uh, Bob Nelson can Bob Nelson or anybody in the administration cut that deal directly with these two kids without board authority? Does he does because he, he, he does he have that authority? Do you know? Or not? I don't. I don't think it. I, I don't think that's Bob Nelson's authority. I don't think Bob would be. I don't know. I, I don't think he would be involved in that. I, I don't. I don't know who Marcelino is talking to. I don't know who the kid is talking to. I don't. I don't know anything. Darius, so I can't I even give you a real up. answer. I had a okay. phone conversation with Bob, and um, he made it clear to me that he doesn't. Tr he, he said something very similar to what Keisha said. He doesn't want to know the kid's name. He's going to have to make an ultimate decision 
here within a week or two. And so, you know, the so I think we need to have the principal on the show because the minute, superintendents Steve. and the trustees don't know the kids. They don't know whether they're, you know, um, Wait, you know, how can a week or two? That's too long. Hold on, 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 time at one at a time. Uh, Steve, please finish. We're going to go to Mike, then, then Marcelino. The executive leadership of Breso Unified, the trustees and the superintendent don't really know a damn thing about the kids. Okay. Okay. So we need to have somebody on who knows more about the kids. I don't think these kids are racist. They shouldn't be treated as racist. And so, you know, that's that's a problem. To me, it's a process problem. They should know more about these kids. They're apparently great kids. Okay, Mike, and then Marcelino. Um, no, I, I just I wanted to double check on, on your comment, Steve, because if this if the superintendent doesn't know who the kids are, that's doesn't make much sense to me. It's a it's very relevant to know everything and who the students are, who the teachers are involved or aren't involved are. I mean, that's all important before you make a decision. I don't know how we can make decisions without information. Uh, maybe they're trying to copy the Fresno City Council. Well, <laughs> well, right, that part. <laughs> but let's go. To, okay, um, but, that's, but, that's what we. That's what we uh, want to do. Yeah, but hold on, hold on. after Mike, we're gonna. Go, I know it's a Keisha Thomas show, but after Mike, we're gonna go to Marcelino. Okay, and to Keisha. Okay, go I ahead. Just, Mike, I just finish, please. Again, I'm sorry. I, I'm here in a very specific capacity. I mean, I can tell you, I learned the importance of. Not, the importance of being very careful about what you say and not being prejudiced, not being racist, being respectful of others, partially in the home. And I had a bit, couple of big life lessons in school, especially at Tanaya with Larry Powell when he was the principal. I won't go into the details, but it's just one of those experiences in your life you never forget when you see someone treated so badly. And then you see an administrator come in and kick some serious butt to set the example. And that's what Larry Powell did. But I just, I'm, I'm very concerned right now because I have nor the Northwest community, which is a lot of Armenians, Persians, white people, Asian people, black people, whatever you want, just people. And they're very concerned about this, but then the facts come out and it doesn't fit the narrative. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what happened and then what the most just response is. Because look, to be fair, historically in this town, and I don't, want, the reality is when you look at the numbers, unfortunately, Black Fresnans do have specific statistical disadvantages. Not that they're not capable of things, but the infant mortality rate's much higher, for example. The ability to find work is much more challenged. And that is an overall systemic problem. Maybe this is the catalyst for that, but first I wanna make sure we fix this problem and this perception issue with Bullard, and then we can talk about the bigger issue, which is unfortunately continuing. Okay, Marcelino. Uh, again, I wanna remind everybody that we did invite both superintendent uh, Nelson and Principal uh, Terigian to this show, and they declined to to be on this show because we wanted to hear from them directly. Expulsion, not expulsion. Who's responsible, and all the, all the issues with these kids. What's going to happen? Is there a deal cut with these kids? What's going to happen? But they were they declined to get on the show. Marcelino, take it away. Yeah, on that topic, I don't think they will. And I don't think uh, just based on them being kids that uh, they'd have an opportunity to. I'm sure their legal team is telling them not to. Uh, but I was just going to make a comment that uh, Supervisor Rando had mentioned about a week or two to make a decision. A week or two, the school's over. I mean, we're, we're close to the end. And I think we need action now on these kids. Uh, this may have already taken place. And uh, if it did, I, I just think it's unfortunate. And maybe retroactively this can be uh, corrected and they can have an opportunity to finish out at Bullard. A uh, couple of comments on Facebook uh, Live on our feed. John Farino, having been an ex-Bullard teacher, he's retired now, and student, have been in many expulsion hearings and they have no chance. I'm, I'm assuming he's referring to these kids, that these kids have no chance. They're gonna be a scapegoat, you did this, we're not going to fix the system. We're just going to ex expel you from this, from the, from the school. And then uh, Robert Wharton has got a question, and this for uh, Marcelino and for Keisha. Did these kids actually break any law, any legal, and any rules or regulations? Is either one of you, I know you're not a, a lawyer for the district, so you, you may not know, but do these kids actually? I don't. It was inappropriate in many ways. But did they actually break? So kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of like gang banging. If I gang bang at school, it's all good. I can go ahead and gang bang at school, and it's all good, right? No, that's there are rules again. I mean, the question is for the layperson: Are there rules against 
being a part of a gang or saying certain things. I mean, yes. if there are rules, that's yes. different. I think that's the question. Yes. Are there policies there are that rules. violated? There yeah. are policies. And these are the same policies and these are the same rules. They're just, they're, this is just one of those rules that we're not going to allow to, you know, go unseen or unheard. This what is one of those rules? things that, you know, one of those, one of those rules that they've broken that we're not going to close our eyes to. You know, there's no gang banging at school. You can't go to school and gang bang. They're going to kick your butt out. You know, you can't, there's some things you just can't do. So, you know, all those things um, will be discussed at the expulsion hearing. I won't be there, but, you know, board leadership or board uh, leadership will not be there. It'll be other people from uh, Fresno Unified School District. So, you know, we have to wait to see what happens. And let me tell okay. you something. That that teacher, I don't know when he retired, but this board has been one of the best boards that I've ever seen. When there's an expulsion here, when there's an expulsion here, and there's been expulsions that we've turned over. So, you know, a 4.0 student and they brought uh, I don't know, a cap gun to school. No, we don't want to we don't want to get rid of them. They're a 4.0 student. So we fought for kids, whether that be they're in, in, in foster care or da da da, whatever it, the case may be, we fought for kids. And this has been one of the most um, cautious boards in terms of expulsions because we know how high expulsions can be. We know how bad they can okay. be. And we know how uh, sometimes things just don't be seen, aren't just seen. So go ahead. We need to kind of move on real quickly. Uh, I have two questions for you. Number one, what are those rules if you know what they are uh, against this kind of behavior? And number two, uh, I think we have a chart we may uh, if we can put those up about black academic performance at Fresno Unified and it's at the bottom and and what uh, so that's really this the, I'm going to talk about the rules first if you know and then number two what are we going to do what has a district done to deal with black performance and anything that they for a4 has done a, a wonderful job of dealing with, number one, if you can't read, you can't do anything else, right? right. So right. A4 has done an awesome job of making sure that they are helping kids to be literate individuals. Um, tell us what A4 you know, they're, they're, is. Tell us what A, A4 is. A, uh, African-American Accelerated Academic, no, uh, I don't know. African-American okay. Accelerated Academic 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 so A4, A4 is a program that we um, adopted. Well, no, Wendy did this whole program yeah, by Wendy herself did. and uh, Miss, Miss Mitchell just took over the program. And so um, A4 is a program where we embedded a reading program. And actually the first summer that they came into um, existence with Fresno Unified, students grew 4.6 months of reading or something like that, that over six is, weeks. Is that one so, of Macaulay's program? Wendy, is that Wendy McCauley? That is Wendy. That is Wendy McCauley's program, an awesome program, and and, and you and know she still, she did her thing. And is she still running that program? She has just stepped down. From, well, she stepped into another position, and Lisa Mitchell um, is now in that position. Is she, Wendy McCauley is still with the district, though, right? Yes, she is. Okay, she's actually goodness. running the okay. foundation. Okay. She's running. Yeah, she's running Good. the foundation. Okay. Yeah, she's running the foundation. Great, thank so, you. So, so in, in lieu of the in lieu of the A4, we also did some academic um, centers. We did some math mentorship. We've put um, we have some men alliances. We have some school reading programs. We have you know, and we're doing like lots of promotions. So it's it's a lot of stuff that we're doing now differently than what used to be done. Right. So kids are are doing better. And COVID didn't really help. You know, but well, you know, where, we got to get back on track. What happened to Wendy? Why did she move? I mean, who's this other woman? Knows her stuff as well as Wendy. Oh, Lee, well, her name is Lisa Nichols, and she just went went changed her name to Lisa Lisa Mitchell. But Lisa Nichols is in charge of so much stuff in Fresno Unified. She was a principal over at Gas, vice principal over at Gaston. Um, she does the some of the uh, African American. Um, um, what do you call it? The program that they do every every year for a African Americans. The program they do over at Gaston, the big production. She does the pro production. She does. She, Lisa does all kinds of stuff. She, so Lisa's have, awesome. Does she have experience with uh, like the academic improvements for kids? Does she does she have that background actually or no? Ac academic and cultural, both. 
So she's she she's ran the BSUs. Got it. Yeah, so she ran a, the B, she ran the BSUs. So she's an expert in that realm. She's a so teacher. She's an educator. So she can work on academic performance, and so we could expect good things from her. Her name is Lisa Mitchell. Is that what you said? We're gonna yes. we're gonna invite her to this show and ask her what are you doing? You should. Tomorrow? Yeah. Please. Could you please let no, her not, know? No, not what are no, not what are you doing? What do you plan to do? Because you know, a lot of stuff for this first year for her is gonna be learning from Wendy, you know, learning the ins and outs, learning the pr programs. You know, her working with BSU was more um uh about the city and culture. Um, this is about <laughs> academics, so it's a little bit different, but um she's an amazing individual and, and she's you know, I, I trust her. And, and right. Wendy, again, Wendy has a great position. So Wendy's good too. What, what, and she's doing what right now? You said she moved to another position. She's doing the foundation. So, so Wendy is now, um, she's, she's in charge of the foundation. We have a foundation, a new foundation right. and she Got did okay. all the work That's herself. Okay. And then uh, and Lisa is a, is a teacher, was, was a teacher or no? Teacher, teacher, vice principal. Um, okay. she was, um, the okay. African-American student, she read, did the academic, African-American student voice. She did Got BSU, it. she, everything, you name but, it, she's done it. But I mean, it's awesome that she's a teacher. So she's got enough experience on how to teach kids to raise their academic performance, right? Yes. Okay, good. Um, yep. uh, any other comments on, on, um, uh, so the kids, let me just, I'm gonna just make sure because we still have a lot of folks uh, on the show that are, that wanna ask, uh, get questions answered. So the kids are not being expelled. At least we don't know that yet. Uh, mm -mm. They're gonna have a hearing. They are yes. gonna be re represented well by their parents, yes. hopefully. And, uh, but they're, they're not gonna get a learning lesson on a, a teaching moment on what is, you know okay. what, what? Right? Is that correct, or is, is there going to be? We 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 missed a piece because somebody asked the question about why aren't we implementing better history, and I, I just really wanted to get to that question. Okay. So we have imp we're implementing ethnic studies, and so um, initially it was um, an elective, I think, but now we are looking to make that a K through eight. Um, the trustees think well the ones that I've talked to, the couple that I've talked to, we, we think that should be a K through eight. I mean, a K through 12. Ethnic studies shouldn't just be about one thing. It should be about everybody. And, and unfortunately, uh, well, kind of fortunately, every city is a little bit different. So our ethnic studies are a little bit different than others um, because we have moms and some people don't have moms. And we have, you know, we have different cultures here in Fresno. We're a little bit different. Well, I'm not in Fresno, but you know, in Fresno, we have a little bit different cultures there. So, you know, we are doing things to implement where kids can learn more about other cultures. And, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll eliminate some of those triggers that people continue to pull. Got it. Uh, we are uh, substantially out of time. Uh, if there's no other in different topic anybody wants to bring up about the allegations of racism in Fresno Unified, I want to go to closing statements. Marcelino, Marcelino uh, Steve or Mike, you have anything else you want to cover? And closing statements. Closing statement. And unfortunately, Emerald Mitchell, mother. Well, actually, Keisha, do you know Emerald Mitchell, a mother of a Bullard High School student, was supposed to be on the show, and she confirmed, but she no showed. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, but anyway. Yeah, I know. I know Miss Mitchell. Okay, you may want to have a conversation with her because uh, in the audience, she would have a great opportunity to, to you know, present what the issues are from her perspective. Okay, we're going to go to closing statements in um, one minute or less. We'll start with uh, Marcelino. Uh, Keisha, you have more than one minute, <laughs> but no oh, more than, oh, God. Oh, hold on, <laughs> 70 seconds. <laughs> It's impossible to get. I think we shot. need to hear a little more from Marcelino. Actually. Okay, Marcelino. Okay, Marcelino. Oh, oh why? Because you agree with him this time? Oh, I haven't talked to him. No. Uh -uh. Marcelino. Okay, please uh, start up away in approximately one minute. Uh, give us your thoughts from PTSA president at Bullard. What happened? What should happen? What are the results? What lessons learned? And what is the right thing to do for our community? Take it away. 
Sure. So I'll speak as a parent, a bullard parent more. Uh, that's probably the most important role I have is as a parent. And, you know, I do empathize with the students, the black students that, uh, you know, had to see this and, and are feeling that uh, this is something that uh, keeps happening and they're not seeing different results. And I do empathize with them. But uh, the one thing that I would like to say is that uh, as a parent, I uh, have students in the Bullard District. I do not feel that uh, racism is widespread. Uh, I'd be naive to say that it doesn't exist. It does. It exists. And but I'll, it's probably just a small element in, within the community, just as a whole, everywhere uh, in Fresno, in the state. Uh, so I don't believe that Buller deserves that label. Um, I do believe that these kids, if if the expulsion is still uh, in the works, I really hope that these kids do get representation. If they're foster kids, I don't know that their parents would be there to represent them. And hopefully someone in the community can step up and represent these kids uh, because they deserve an opportunity. They deserve an opportunity to state their case and to be heard and to be given an opportunity to make things right. This is a teachable moment. I really don't want these kids to have this, uh, this stigma follow them for the rest of their lives. And so I'm hoping cooler heads prevail and that the community can rally around these kids, the whole community, and uh, uh, you know, just try to learn from this and move forward. Well, everybody, you heard it here first uh, from the head of, as a, as a Bullard uh, parent, and has a head of a, a Bullard PTSA, uh, what really should happen to, uh, to these kids and what learning experiences we should all have uh, instead of ex expelling these kids. Okay, Trustee Thomas, and approximately one minute. No, I'm gonna make it short. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it short and sweet. I'm not even gonna take a whole minute. I'm gonna say this to Marcelino's um, statement. So, you know, all I've heard is these kids shouldn't get expelled. These kids, this shouldn't happen. All the things that shouldn't happen. I have yet to hear anybody say besides counseling or teaching moments. I've yet to hear anybody to say, what are the consequences that should be given to these kids? Secondly, um, black kids are, have been overlooked for everything. They get traumatized. We might or might not give them a little social emotional uh, support. We may or may not do that. You know, how fair is that to those kids? They don't get social emotional support up front or teaching up front. No, they get slapped down to the ground. And then we may or may not come to you and ask you if you need some support. So how, how equitable are we being in this conversation completely? How, real, how equitable are we really being? So with that being said, I love you guys. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the best decision I know how to make where this situation is concerned. Um, and, and just know that my door is always open to have any conversations about anything and anyone. I appreciate you guys for just, just taking me in your house and asking me questions and, and drilling me. <laughs> You're doing a fantastic job, by the way. And, and next time, this, by the way, this won't be the last episode. We're going to be talking about racism in Fresno. I hope not much longer, but until the issue gets addressed, we hope you come back, Keisha, and bring Miss... Well, oh. uh, Mitchell, uh, Emerald Mitchell. Um, well, I, I will I will come back, but when I come back, I may bring kids. And, and my Please. big ask to you all for my last 30 seconds is that you all go out there and be support systems for some of these kids and be mentors and do, do the right thing on your behalf. And, and I am a proud Bullard graduate and I'm a proud Bullard parent. And that what's, not, what's wrong is wrong. And I don't care what campus that's on. And I'm not just saying only Bullard. I'm saying across the district. It's not just Bullard. Got it. Okay, Mike. No, thank you. And I, you know, I'm really grateful, uh, Mr. Valdez and Trustee Thomas, for being here tonight because this is probably the most in-depth conversation since this whole thing happened in the last week. And look, I've noticed there are some folks that don't want us to do this show because they don't want to talk about uncomfortable subjects. But the reality is, we are never going to stop the trend of inequality or inequity or problems in our community if we can't come together from all different sides and walks of life and talk about this stuff. Solving problems can be very uncomfortable, but that's what we strive to do here. You know, explore, explain, expose. We want to solve our problems unfiltered. Um, so the other thing I want to say is, I, I, whether it's the kids that were marching demanding justice, whether it's the two kids or three kids involved in this case, 
Um, in the end, as adults, I want to make sure that we are acting in a manner that is best for them. And it's not easy to say how we're going to do that. Um, Trustee Thomas made a good point. Well, what is the punishment for these kids? What I want these foster kids to have is the same opportunity I had. Now, I was lucky for 15 years of my life. I was a two-parent household. A lot of kids don't have that. I was lucky to have that. But I also went to a school where the administrators, whenever they got a whiff of anything, would have a very swift reaction. And I got that positive reinforcement and I was taught those ethics <clears throat> at a younger age. And I don't know if these kids had that opportunity, but at the very least, whether it's suspension or it's having to interact with the black community and know that th this was stupid, plain stupid, that will at least give them a chance to have an opportunity in the future to become better people. But also, um, anyways, I'll just leave, I'll leave it, I'll leave that at that. We're just, that's just a thought. Um, but the last thing I want to say, and I think I'm on just about 70 seconds. Um, I really am concerned about a lot of the residents who are very upset about this incident. Um, and we want to find out what the facts are. I hope that the administration at the district does do that. Armin Terigian is a great principal. He was great at Tanaya. Uh, I'm so grateful he's at Bullard right now. I know, I understand maybe he couldn't be here because the, he couldn't get the okay for that. And I understand that. But um, I have a lot of confidence in you, Armin, and uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. I hope that yep. Armin gets the okay uh, from his boss. Sound like it's gonna be Bob <laughs> Nelson to get on the show. Maybe it's Keisha. Keisha, can you give him the green light? Maybe if Keisha you, says Armin, you, you, you can you come. Know, I I will I will talk to Armin and see what he says. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm not, you know, it's and again, it's still under investigation, you guys. So you know, it's it's right. some fine lines that we can't walk when we're talking about babies and kids. You know, it's some fine lines. So you know, maybe okay. after all of this is over, maybe he'll be able to have a conversation with you all. Okay, Steve. <clears throat> I don't even know where to start. When we address these oh, situations, Lord. where we, when we address these situations, and our primary thing is. What are the consequences? What is the punishment? When we're talking about young people, we're already off to the wrong, we're off on the wrong foot. And we're condemning these young people. And by the way, I don't care. I'm not now just talking about this incident that happened last week. I'm talking about all the other incidents that were referred to on Facebook Live tonight. There's been other incidents, other kids of different ethnic backgrounds. The Fresno Unified probably needs to spend some time tackling that. And instead of looking at it punishment wise, look at it, what is the best thing for the individual student? Because I believe with the once in this particular case, when the um, parents and the I guess I should say when the adults went full knee jerk on this particular instance, we lost sight of almost everything else and we lost the teachable moment. Now the only teachable moment left to be had is among the tr trustees and the superintendent and the faculty. So hopefully there'll be a teachable moment there. But my guess is that we went from the blackface thing to this thing, and about three years we'll go to another thing, and uh, we'll still just be throwing around racists, and no kids will probably get helped. Thank you, Steve. Uh, sounds like Keisha wants to come back, and uh, you have you have a 10-second comment. And we've never done this before. You yeah, he, no, he needs, yeah. I want to hear Brando say he's going to find a kid to be a mentor to because he's talking about all this stuff. I want to see the proof okay. in the pudding. I'm I want to see you, you go My choice your kid. of kids is the is the uh, Fresno Unified Board of Trustees. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go. I will I'm come go in and mentor. I will mentor starting tomorrow night. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna help us, <laughs> Mr. Supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Keisha. Thanks, Marcelino. Hold Great on. Job. Don't leave yet. It's my turn. Hold on. Okay. Uh -oh. uh, my, my, here's my closing comment. There should be no tolerance for racism anywhere in our community uh, or bullying. And we know this happens in elementary school, you know, and, and junior high and high school, whether it's racism or bullying from white to white, black to black, black. Mexican, uh, Hispanic to Hispanic, et cetera. But we should not tolerate that because we know what kind of a damage that does to a psyche of a, of a student when they're bullied or a, a victim of racism. Uh, this should be a learning moment. Kids make mistakes and uh, we should have the opportunity to learn from those mistakes and, and figure out how, to, how the pe person that bullied somebody else or bullied the public uh, 
is uh, how did it make the, the victims feel? So make it a learning moment. And administration and the board have a responsibility. Uh, if you've known this has happened for a while at Bullard uh, or anywhere else, you have the responsibility to address these issues. Make sure the culture is a, a that doesn't tolerate any racism and fix the source of the problem, not just the symptom. So in my opinion, what's going to happen, these two kids are going to get punished. Maybe there's three kids going to get punished. And we're going to say, hey, we did something. We reacted without solving the root of the, root of the problem, getting to it, finding out what the issues are and addressing it. And most importantly, everybody's responsibility is to make sure we help the educational outcome of all kids. Kids get a good, good education. They can get out, get into career tech. They can get into college. They can make a much better life for themselves. And we got to make sure they like coming to school. Every kid. And that should be the responsibility. And, it's, and we're going to hold from the top, the board and the administration responsible. All of us in this community should. And if we don't, shame on us. We deserve more of this stuff to come down. Elections matter. There's uh, four seats coming up this fall in November. Uh, and we got all of us got to be involved, talk to the superintendent uh, to make sure that there's no, there's no tolerance for racism, bullying, and in, in, in Fresno Unified. And we have a culture of excellence to improve academic achievement of every kid. On that note, uh, thank you all for all of you for uh, watching this uh, episode. Thank you, Keisha, for coming on. Thank you, Marcelino, for coming on to, uh, to discuss this difficult, difficult topic. We're going to do this show again because, unfortunately, I don't think this, this is the end of this episode. Once we find out what's happened to these kids, what the administration and the board has done to these kids, we're going to have both of you guys back. I know Bob. Uh, Bob Nelson told uh, Steve he's not going to get, get up on the show or show, show up here. We hope somebody uh, or other board members will come on to discuss uh, the, the verdict for these uh, kids. <laughs> am, I, am I the only one that like you guys? <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one strong enough. That's the thing. Guts. Yes. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Have a great week. See you all next Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Marcelino.